Okay, so there's a question about, you know, how do we find this diameter here, right there, of that circle? And uh, to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, in this rectangle down here, this side here is the same as the 16 on the opposite side. In a similar way, if this is 12, this side over here is also 12. And the question is, what is the diameter of this semicircle here? But what we're going to do to figure it out is because this diameter also happens to be the hypotenuse of this triangle in here. So we're making an assumption that these shapes that we see in here are what they appear to be. That is, this appears to be a rectangle, this appears to be a rectangle, this appears to be a triangle, and this one appears to be a half circle. So we're making that assumption that that is, even though it didn't indicate it in the problem. So what we can do to find the diameter, and of course the diameter is um, two times the size of the radius. If we have the diameter, we can find the radius. So this is another problem where you know, there's nowhere in there that says, you know, use the Pythagorean theorem, but that is in fact what you have to use in order to find that, that diameter. So here's our right triangle. Take the 12 squared, 16 squared, and that equals the D squared. Oops, there it is. So 12 squared plus 16 squared equals D squared. Once you find D, that is the diameter of the circle, the semicircle. So it looks like since d squared is 400, the square root of 400 is 20. 20 squared is 400. So that diameter turns out to be 20. So the radius is half that. Okay. So the distance around the outside would be this guy and this one 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 and this one. So what is that red length? That's the distance around the outside. And then the distance around the inside triangle would be there and there and there. That one's not too bad once you find the D is 20. 20, 36, 48. Let's add those three together to get the 48. <clears throat> so if you go 25 times around that inner triangle, you get 2160, whatever the units are. And if you found that the distance around the outside was 115, if you take 10 times the 115.416, you're going to get this number. So 1154 compared to 2160, which is longer? Well, the 2160. So the 25 times around the inner circle, or the inner triangle. Okay, let's take a look at um, how we got this 15, 115, this distance around the outside. All right. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to go in this direction. We don't have this side, but this side is opposite this side. So this one here is 12. And then this side is 16. And then we're coming up here. That's 12. And then we're coming over here. Well, this side's 16, so this one also is 16. And then we go up, add that 12. And we come over here. So we're going to add that other 16. And then we're going to add this. We got this arc here. That's the last thing we have to add. I'm just going to call it x. OK, so this x here, we're assuming that this is a semicircle. So the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. But remember, that's the circumference of a whole circle. And so if we want just the circumference of a semicircle, 
we would have to take the circumference of the whole circle and multiply it by half. So the half and the two will cancel out. So it's just pi times r. But we've already, from our work over here, we found the diameter is 20, so therefore the radius is 10. So we know what that radius is. So it's actually equal to 10 pi, which is you know 3.14159, you know, multiply that by 10, 3.14159. That's what you would get for this x. So this x is 31.4159. That's the half of the circumference. And so if you just add up these one, two, three, three twelves, that's 36. And you have one, two, three sixteens. Three sixteens and three twelves, okay. And then you just add the 31.4159. And there's your 115. In problem seven, you know, two of these are just kind of standard shapes. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you about surface area of a cone, but we do have the formula for the volume of a cone. It's one third times the same volume as a corresponding cylinder. It has the same height and the same base rad radius. And the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. We know the height, we can deduce the radius, plug them in there to get the volume. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So you see the r here, you see the h here, and just plug them in. Here the diameter is eight, so the radius is four, but the 12 is the h. And then the surface area, the surface area, you've got this circle on the top and the circle on the bottom, that's two circles. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. Then if you cut this cylinder's label and roll it out, you're gonna have a rectangle and the rectangle is the length, which is the circumference of the circle, times the width, which is the height. Anyways, this formula is uh, one of the formulas that, that you will have access to. It's the surface area of a circular cylinder, two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Two pi r squared plus two pi r h. And you've got the r and the h. Uh, this one here, you have to use kind of your concept of, of what does it mean to have an area and what does it mean for volume. And so what we're going to assume is that each one of these little blocks here is used to construct this big shape. How many of these one by one by one blocks would it take to build this entire shape? That's precisely what the volume is. So you could just count them. Count the low, how many in the lower level, then count how many in the next level, and then count how many in the next level, and then finally count how many of these are in the top level, and just add them together. And that would be the number of these little blocks that it takes to build the whole thing, that would be the volume. There certainly is no volume formula for a shape like that. And if you want the surface area, just figure if you're going to just paint the outside, so nothing on the inside. Area just is a measure of the outside. So just count up all of these surfaces that are facing you. You know, how many of these would you have to paint? And the number of those little squares that you have to paint, that would be the, the surface area. How many do you think are in the back that you can't see? How many are in this back, you know, looking in this way, behind this shape? How many are back there that you would have to? And then if you're looking from the bottom, how many 
squares would you have to paint? Surface area, how many X's would you see down there? All right, so here's some um, answers for these others. And here are the answers down here for these as well. Okay, so there's a question about the surface area here. Um, think about it this way. <clears throat> if you look at this shape from this direction, you're at eye level with it, you're gonna see this and this and this and this, and you're gonna see these, and you're gonna see these, and you're gonna see these. So if you just look at the faces coming this way, you're gonna have four, 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 and four, that's 16, but those same 16 faces are gonna be viewed from back here. So looking from these two angles, you're gonna have 16 squares that you need to paint. Now, when you look down from the top, you're gonna to see those four and these four and these four and then these eight. So four, 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 and four, that's 20. But if you look from underneath, basically, you've got this first layer, this bottom layer of, of blocks. And there are one, two, three, four, five here, and one, two, three, four. So there's gonna be 20 blocks on that lower level. Three times four, 12 on this level. Two times four, eight on this level. And one times four, four on that level. So if you add up these numbers, you're gonna get the volume. But underneath, you're gonna see 20. And looking down, you're gonna see 20. So you've got 16, 16, 20, and 20. And then let's look in this direction, right at this face right here. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven blocks coming in this way, but it's the same coming in the other way. Eleven. If you had to paint them all. So you're sure you got them all because you got the faces facing out from underneath, 20 and 20. You've got the faces coming in from the left and the right at 16 and 16. And then you've got the 11 and the 11 coming from the, the left and the right. And all of those must add up to 94. And the idea here would be to, this one's not so bad because you just count up the number of squares to get the vol to get the uh, area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that gives you the area. And then the perimeter would be the dis distance around. So if you just start adding up the lengths as you go around, you'll eventually hit the um, 26. So that's the perimeter around, and you've got 12 blocks. Uh, this one's much harder because, you know, you can find these horizontal and vertical, if there are any vertical distances, you could find them. For example, this one is two, and this one is one, two, three, four. But it's hard to figure out these slanted ones here. In order to find the slanted ones, you have to use a version of the Pythagorean theorem and then create a right, <coughs> a right triangle for which this diagonal side is a hypotenuse. And then do the same thing here and the same thing here. And that would enable you to find this side and this side and this side. Three different instances of the Pythagorean theorem. And then you would figure out those plus the four and the two and that would give you the perimeter. And then I guess I would recommend if you're gonna do the area, divide it into three shapes and you've got a rectangle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Area in there is eight. One, two, three, four, two, one half base times width is four. And then this one has a height of two and a base of four. So I think this one also is four.